refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined here in Guadalajara, Mexico with Tony Sims. Tony, how are you finding it out here? Yeah, I like it here and uh, we've had a great reception and the Mexican people love their boxing. It's obviously the, uh, the biggest event that's ever happened in Guadalajara and uh, you could just feel the anticipation with people looking forward to this event and uh, even when you turn the TV on in the um, like turn the TV on in the room this morning, and covered on the telly, you know, in Spanish, obviously. So I don't know what they're talking about, but it's just covered everywhere, you know. And uh, obviously, Canelo is a massive name in world boxing, let alone in his hometown. So you can uh, you can see how massive this uh, the stage is, and it's gonna it's gonna be a great night on Saturday night. You've been involved as a coach in some massive nights in the sport. In my opinion, I don't know if it's you're of the same opinion, this is probably the biggest you've ever been involved in, just because of the the size of this in Canelo's hometown, the face of boxing, the task at hand. Is this a really, really tough night for John Ryder, or you think that he can come through this? Yeah, of course it is. And, uh, it is a very tough night. You're fighting the undisputed champion, an all-time great, a fighter that's going to go into the Hall of Fame. And you know, it's a big task, but I believe in destiny and believing things happen for a reason. And I believe that John's worked hard to get to this point. And I think that John's probably at the peak of his, of his game at the minute. And um, he's in great condition, he's had a great camp. And he, you know, he, the last year he's had a great year as well. He's probably had his best year in boxing, so he, he's ready for Saturday. Some people would say that John deserved the win twice in Liverpool, actually against Rocky Fielding and then against Callum Smith. If he had have beaten Callum Smith at that time, you'd be facing a much tougher Canelo, would you say? Because now you're at the point where John's on the up. Canelo's last year hasn't been the best of his career. It's evident that he's getting older. Is this the best time for you to face Canelo? Without a doubt. And um, like you say, like when, when, when that decision went against John Ryder, a Callum Smith decision, it was like, you know, he was devastated because he believed he won that fight. Most people believed he won that fight in the stadium. And um, he was obviously devastated because he's had, he had to watch Callum Smith go across to Vegas and fight uh, Canelo and uh, as world champion and John felt like it should have been him doing that but like you're saying then two years ago Canelo was probably at his peak and now we're not sure I mean you can't take you know he said he had a wrist injury all last year so maybe that that was why he weren't firing on all cylinders so you can't take anything away from him but he, like you say, his last couple of fights, he ain't looked like the Canelo we, 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 we're used, used to. Without giving away a game plan here, what does John Ryder need to do on Saturday night to beat Saul Alvarez? He just needs to box how he, how he boxes. He's, he's, he's smart defensively. We all know he's an inside fighter. And, um, you know, if he, can, if he can get on the inside of anybody... I mean, you see what he done to Callum Smith when he got on the inside of him. You know, he's dangerous. And um, and Danny Jacobs, when he got on the inside of Danny Jacobs, he had him badly hurt. And you never, you never see Jacobs get hurt in the uh, Canelo fight or the Triple G fight when he fought them two big punches. But, but he was badly hurt against John. So when he gets on the inside, he, he is very dangerous on the inside. And he, he just needs to fight his fight, you know, and do what he does best. John is evident, evidence of how the zero doesn't matter in this sport anymore in terms of taking a loss. He's been on the end of some tough defeats as we've just spoke about, some decisions that probably should have went his way. We're now at a stage where you're coming into the opponent's backyard. 
is that in your thinking to say, you know, we heard Mauricio Sullivan say yesterday at the press conference that, you know, it'll be fair, it's unique judges, but does it still sit in your mind that you go four hours from where you're from and you get robbed of a decision? Could that happen over here too? Yeah, and like John's decisions that have been controversial have been away from home. And uh, like he's been the away fighter. Billy Joe Saunders fight. Some people thought he could have gone to John as well, but that was on a away show and he's all he's always the away fighter and like we're across the other side of the world now in in like Canelo's hometown and you you know you can't be deluded enough to think that with the judges I mean everyone likes to think that judges are fair but life's not fair and you know you you got to be thinking that you ain't going to get no decisions here so but what John's got to do he's got to put the best performance he can put in and in the public side when if the public thinks that John wins the fight, and sometimes that will, will, that's all that matters because you may get the return on the neutral ground, they don't know. So, you know, what all John can do is go and put in his best performance he can put in and try and win the fight. When we talk about the last nine months for Tony Sims, it's been manic, it's been crazy. You've a nice couple of weeks here with Cordina winning and hopefully John Ryder getting his hand raised on Saturday night. How tough has the last nine months been for you with the whole Connor situation going on and, and mentally for you as a coach? Has it been tough? Yeah, it's been tough and uh, it's something that you, you would never see coming And because uh, I know the kid really well and, you know, it it had been to any one of my fighters that happened been to and um, it's been really tough but tough times don't always last and, you know, you've got to get through the tough times and, you know, I've kept working through that and as you say, we had Joe Cordina won the world title and now John's got a big shot, so it's like life really, life's up and down. It's not all it's not all easy and not all great. Life's up and down and the same goes for boxing, it's up and down. What have you done to combat <clears throat> the the mental struggles of the last nine months? And Connor said something yesterday to me when we had an interview together and he said that you've called him almost every day. Have you had to be there a lot for Connor through this process? Yeah, of course, because listen, he's a young man and um, he's being accused of something that he hasn't done. And uh, it's very difficult. And obviously, I was worried about him, you know, I felt like the, leak, the leaks into the press and the press was damaging to him and, uh, and people that you don't expect in this game that you've known for a long time. You don't expect them to speak how they've spoken about a kid that they know as well. So it's been damaging, you know, and uh, sometimes that sort of damage is hard to get over and, and, it, and it's long lasting in your mind. But as I say, I think we're coming to the end, end of that now. Uh, Connor's lawyers, dealing with UCAD Direct and uh, hopefully within the next few weeks there'll be some sort of decision coming out. Within the next few weeks when that decision does come out, you've said that hopefully that will be Connor back in the ring. Who would you like to see him face and, and the names out there that, that are calling him out? We've heard Pacquiao mention, we've heard Thurman mention. Who, who do you want to see him face? Is, is Eubank still a possibility? I spoke to him yesterday about Josh Kelly. Do you like that fight for him? Um, I think we'd be looking at a top 10 fight in the... Uh, you know, in the rankings, and uh, there's no point going backwards. You need you need to keep elevating forwards, and uh, you know, if, if he gets through this year in the UK, then then we'll be looking to fight maybe mid June, end of June, and uh, hopefully it'll be a big name in the welterweight division. You had a an excellent win when Joe Cordina became two-time world champion just over a week ago. Um, in terms of that. That win for Joe Cordina, where does he go next? We've heard Zelfa Barrett mentioned, or are you more looking towards unifications? Well, yeah, Joe, Joe wants a unification fight, and um, he, uh, by becoming a two-time world champion, I believe that he's the number one super featherweight in the world. And, um, you know, you've got the other champions calling him out now, so I believe that a unification fight can be made and I think Eddie is working on that now, so we're hoping that 
by all, by August, September, there'd be a unification on the line for Joe. Well, Tony, thank you so much for your time. Good luck on Saturday night with John, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up after, and he's, he's got his hand raised. Yeah, nice one. Thank you very much. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it, their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 